Right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, in today's episode, we are going to be um, looking through dictionaries and how to add and remove them. So I've already written the code. Um, hopefully, you don't just look at this and go copy and paste and leave. Um, I'm going to try to explain how we do this. So for this reference, I have a... I'm going to hide that. So we have two dictionaries. We have items and inventory. We're not going to look at the items. Um, we're, but we're going to look at the uh, inventory as a dictionary for reference. So in our inventory, let's quickly explain the dictionary itself. So dictionary by itself just looks like this. That's one dictionary. And we have a key and then with a value in it. So we can put whatever. So we can even put like a value one. So that's one dictionary. I'm just going to error because that's not a variable. Um, but this is a dictionary inside of another dictionary. So the reason I use this format for uh, an inventory is because we can now put a bunch of things inside of a dictionary inside of another dictionary. So one item would be a key. So for example, zero, that, that specific key. So key zero is an item. And inside that item, we have a bunch of information about that item. We have the name of it, the description, the cost, the count, et cetera. You can put whatever you want in here. You can put stats, you can put like strength, whatever. And so this is a really dynamic way of making items. So from here, we can add a bunch of keys. Um, for reference, I'm just going to have one item for now. So we're going to have name, description, cost, and count. Uh, Apple is the default. This is an Apple cost, whatever. And for the, and so to add to it, so to add it to a dictionary, it's actually not very difficult. So I've created a function called add, and we're just going to pass through the name, the description, the cost, and the count. So this allows us to um, create a new item completely from scratch and it's completely dynamic. So we can now create an item essentially. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a variable called has item. So we're gonna check if the inventory has that item already, right? So we wanna check if the, it depends on what kind of inventory you wanna have. But in my case, I have a count. So if something's unique, maybe, maybe if you have, you might have a third or a fifth thing that says unique and you might only check if it's unique. If it is unique, then don't check for count at all and just add it to the inventory. But we're gonna pretend as if we want to add it only if there is a if that item exists already. So let's have a value called has item and let's loop through our dictionary. So Godot allows us to actually just loop through our dictionary by saying for in inventory. So it'll just loop through our actual dictionary. So in this case, we only have one, so it'll only go through the first one. So I will be zero. And so we're gonna look at I equals zero. So if inventory at zero, which is this one, its name is equal to the string that we're adding. So let's say I'm trying to add Apple. So I pass through Apple as the name, right? And it has to be capitalized. Um, then I'm just gonna increase the count. I'm just gonna say count plus equals count, right? So, cause I also count through here. So maybe I wanna add like five apples. It's gonna plus equals to five, to six in this case, right? Uh, and then we're just gonna set has item to true and then nothing will happen because in this case, we're checking if it's false. If it's true, then nothing else happens. We just increase the count and that's it. And we return. Um, we don't have to return the, the inventory because it just gets added here. So the, that is how we add to the count. Now we didn't add anything to the dictionary. We didn't change it. However, now let's look into how we can actually add to something. So uh, if you look at the Godot, uh, I would definitely recommend you look at the Godot reference for dictionaries. They're very useful. Um, I'm not sure. I think I can pull it up by doing this and then dictionary. Here we go. We can scroll down a little bit and it'll show you right here to add a key to an uh, existing dictionary. All you have to do is add to a dictionary that it doesn't exist, so add a key that doesn't exist. So it's going to add blue as a key because blue does not exist in this current dictionary, right? Um, it's, it's basically taking this dictionary and saying at blue, at key blue, make it equal to 150. Right, it's not because blue does not exist here. It's going to add to it. That's how we add to a dictionary. So we're going to do. We're going to have use that concept to add to our dictionary. So we want to add at the very end of our dictionary. So it's very simple to access that by just saying the size. So the size is one, right? So we only have one key in this size. So we're going to add at position one, key one, right? So that's literally what we're going to do. So if I were to type it out, I would think, okay, the size is one. So I'm going to add one. That is it. Right? So that's how we add to the, the very last of our dictionary, right? So we now have inventory one that we're going to add to. And what do we want to add? Well, it's pretty simple. We just add the dictionary that we create. So we're going to create our dictionary here with our keys that we want to add. So we're name, description, cost, and count. You can add whatever else you want. Um, in this case, 
we're passing through the cost count and description and name through the add function. So that's how we add. It's actually not very difficult. Uh, it's, it's just setting it equal to, and that will add to it. So uh, let's test that. So let's let me comment this out. So in here, in our main function, um, I've just have, I have two labels and it's just gonna print out our dictionaries. So the original dictionary is gonna be the original dictionary with just the apple. It's gonna loop through our label and just print out our dictionary in a nice manner. Um, and it also print out the key. So it'll print out the key right here, which is should be zero. And then we're gonna add two things. We're gonna add a banana and we're gonna add something. This is just gibberish, um, just to test if it actually adds it. We'll put like a bunch of things here to, as a description. And we'll add count, why not? And then cost, we'll change that as well. And then, it, then we'll do that same thing. So it's gonna be the exact same thing, but we're just gonna print it in a different label. So that way we have two separate labels. So let's play. And we now have our original dictionary here. So we have apple at key zero. And now we can see in here in our second dictionary, we've added the name, description, cost, and count, right? That we pass through. So banana, description, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let me pull up the thing. And we've also added this one at key two. So you can see the key is working. So we have zero, one, two. The key is working awesome. So we can now add to a dictionary very nicely. So this is a pretty good function um, I've made, I guess, that you could kind of use in a game that you want to add to a dictionary. And it's pretty flexible, so it doesn't have to be an inventory. It can be whatever you want, but this is pretty cool in the sense that it'll always add to the end of the dictionary. Okay, now let's move into removing from a dictionary. Now removing is very interesting because there is no remove function in our dictionary. If we go here, we look at all the uh, things that exist. Move is not one of them. Um, we have erase. Oh. Okay, so I guess erase does work, or erase a dictionary key pair by an eye. Huh. I actually don't know if this works. Let's try that. <laughs> that would be kind of funny if it does. So let's let's give that a try. Let's say global dot inventory dot dot, er, dot erase will erase uh, key zero. Let's try that. Oh, interesting. It does work. However, it's not perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it, this is interesting. I I don't think that they had this in Godot three point five, but that's good that they added that because that actually helps us quite a bit. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't work perfectly. In fact, I should. Yeah, we'll pretend that didn't exist. Um, let's let's continue on as if that didn't exist. But the reason why that isn't perfect, let's let's go back. Um, you might have seen the the keys did not change. It was still one and two. And the reason why that's a problem is because if we want a dynamic dictionary or inventory or anything really, we want all the keys to update. We want the keys to move back to backwards essentially into the our dictionary. So we want, um, in our case, so we had apple as key zero, we removed it, but banana stayed as key one, but we want banana key to, to subtract basically, to go to zero and et cetera, and all the way. So no matter how many items we have, it'll go back, right? So let's, let's take a look at our remove function. So we have remove item, and we're gonna pass through a string in this case, right? So here, let's close the dictionary, we don't need that. In here, we're gonna uh, pass through banana. So we're gonna try to remove banana. Right, and here um, you could pass through a count if you want um, to only subtract one or something. Uh, actually, no, we don't have to, or we didn't do that, but I ended up doing that anyways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop through our inventory, that's the first thing, and we're gonna find the item. So we're gonna find the item that's in our inventory. Um, if it doesn't exist, nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna error. Um, in fact, let's try that. So if I put a bunch of numbers here, it should not error because it's just not gonna find it and then it's gonna not do anything, right? So it's gonna say else nothing. Um, and then we're gonna subtract the count. So once we found the item, we're just gonna subtract the count. Now, if the count is now equal to zero, meaning there are no more uh, counts of this item, then we wanna remove that from our dictionary, right? And so to do that, we're gonna create a temporary dictionary to fill in a bunch of things into it. And so essentially what we wanna do, let's, in our case, we have, uh, let's remove banana. So in our case, we have, we had apple, banana, and then this one, the something. Um, we want to remove banana and then update the ones after it into subtracting it minus one. We, we want to subtract the key by one in each one, right? But we want to also make sure we add the ones before that 
that one that we removed. So we want to add Apple at key at that exact same key, right? So in our global back here, we for loops our inventory one more time. And we're going to essentially add each dic at each key to our dictionary, our temporary dictionary. And this is going to add everything that's before that key. So we have our apple or a banana and the apples before it. We're going to add that apple first. And then we're going to add, then we're going to go to the banana, but we want, we don't want the banana. So here we can see that if X equals one, we don't have that. We're not checking for if it's equal, right? So once, once we're equal to the banana, meaning we're on the key of the banana, we're not even going to add it. We're just going to skip it and we're going to add the ones next to it, right? To it after. So the next one, so the, the something in our case is going to, we're going to subtract the key. So we're going to say X equals minus one. And then we're going to make that equal to the global dot X, right? And then once we have, we filled our dictionary with a bunch of keys that are subtracted from that, that key that we just removed, then we're just going to clear our inventory. Okay, so this is a function that exists in Godot. And then we're just going to make it equal to the temporary dictionary. And then that's it. So now we can see that it works in our thing here. We can remove the banana, which is awesome. So now in our updated thing, it works fine. Um, and this is why, I guess, erase does not work. So even if we erase something, um, erase 0, let's erase 1. So this is the same thing as erasing banana or taking out banana. However, as you can see, the key does not update. And this is a problem because if we had a dynamic inventory, the banana or this something would stay in that same key and slot, and it would be hard to access it, right? Because there would still be something in our inventory uh, at key one, right? Um, it wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to like, okay, let me explain why this is a problem. So if I try to loop through our inventory, at key one, it's gonna, it's not gonna access anything because there's nothing there. So that's why erase might not be perfect. And so this remove function might be a little better. And also, uh, I don't think it exists in Godot three. So there you go. Um, hopefully, we understand how to use dictionaries now. Um, hopefully, that helped. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I will do my best to help. Go subscribe, comment, like, share, and let me know what. You kind of video you guys want to see next and I will see you guys next time.